Welcome to the analysis of string quintet number 1, opus 88, first movement by Johannes Brahms. Brahms wrote two string quintets, both of which are written for two violins, two violas, and one cello. This configuration was borrowed from Mozart's string quintet rather than Schubert's. He was an extra cello rather than an extra viola. The first string quintet was written in 1882, in the period when Brahms took a six-year hiatus in the middle of his four symphonies to concentrate on chamber music and other genres. At this time, Brahms was living in Vienna, Austria, but had taken to the habit of spending much of his springs and summers in the countryside. One of his favorite places was Bad Ischl, a spa town in Upper Austria. It was here that he received inspiration for many of his works, including string quintet number one. Brahms would often go walking in the mornings until he got ideas for his composing, and then spend the afternoons writing them down. He wrote in the manuscript of the first string quintet, written in the spring of 1882. Because of this, some have nicknamed it the Spring Quintet. The influence of spring can be heard in the weightless folk song-like melodies of the first movement. The first movement of this quintet is in sonata form, which is traditional for first movements of works such as this. There are three parts in sonata form, the exposition, the development, and the recapitulation. Just like in many other works in sonata form, here we have two themes being introduced in the exposition, turned into something new in the development, and brought back again in the recapitulation. In the exposition, the first theme is presented directly from the beginning, establishing F major as the tonal center of the piece. This is followed by an extended transition of 24 measures that leads into the second theme. A dotted figure is the primary motive of this section, and the harmonies are unstable. Starting in F major, it uses augmented six chords and sequences to quickly go between harmonies related to F major and harmonies related to A major, the key of the second theme. It ends on an E major chord, a clear half cadence in the key of A. Brahms takes advantage of an extra viola here with a beautiful viola solo introducing the second theme, a melody consisting of a lilting 6-4 against a 4-4 accompaniment, which you can see right here. Later, the first violin picks up the same melody. As has been mentioned, this theme is squarely in A major. Following the iteration of the second theme by the first violin, we get a closing material theme, consisting of a dotted quarter note followed by eight notes. This rhythmic motive overlaps with the cello and second viola echoing the rest of the players. The first ending brings this to a close in F major before we get a repeat of the entire exposition. This would be a good place to note that the exposition is one way in which Brahms departs from traditional sonata form. Regularly, the second theme would be in the dominant key, so in this case, C major, but here we unexpectedly modulate to A major, which is not a relative of F major at all. Not only does this introduce ambiguity to the listener about what the actual tonal center is, but we can also see an interesting musical signature of Brahms here. A motto that Brahms adopted in his early life was free aber fro, or free but happy. By going from F major in the first theme to A major in the second theme and back to F major in the closing material, we get an FAF scheme that represents free aber fro. After the repeat of the exposition, the second ending of the closing material takes us away from F major. Instead, we modulate to a minor key, marking the beginning of the development. In this first section, triplet eighth notes pull against regular eighth notes to highlight the instability of the harmony as we go on a wild ride through several key areas, which is typical of development. From E major, dominant of the second theme, we go to the relative C sharp minor, then back to E major, which changes to E minor before coming to rest 
in C major after tonicizing G major, the relative major of E minor, and dominant of C major. See if you can hear the beginning of the development. In the last part of the development, the retransition, a pedal tone C in the cello continues as B flat starts coming back, marking a return to F major in the dominant area. Bits of theme 1 and the transition motive can be heard. An increase in rhythmic motion brings us to the recapitulation. The recapitulation begins with theme 1 slightly modified with triplet figures in the violas and the cello. See if you can recognize when the first theme starts again. Just as in the exposition, the transition follows theme 1, but this time it is slightly different. Among other things, it is three measures shorter, and instead of making its way to A major through an E major dominant chord, it takes us directly to an A major dominant chord, a half cadence for the second theme to begin in D major. You should recognize this dotted rhythm. Theme 2 follows almost exactly as it did in the exposition, only this time in D major. As expected, we then see the closing material in a different key, B flat major. This brings us to a coda, an F major with mostly dominant harmonies. The music slows down before ending with an energetic dominant to tonic last three measures in F major. Mm -hmm. 